buddy too. The great Tom Brenneman, Eric Karros, the, we're teeing them up in just a moment. You know, the Cardinals are without two of their big offensive cogs in this one today. That lineup is still good. It's been firing on all cylinders without Lance Berkman, but no David Freeze today. Yeah, David Freeze has been on fire too. You know, but but this, like you said, they're deep. I'm really impressed with Lance Lynn being able to go from the bullpen to starter, and we're right there to get it going. All right, we'll be here with updates throughout the afternoon. For now, it's off to St. Louis. Tom Brenneman and Eric Carroll. All right, Matty, thank you very much. Opening weekend here in St. Louis began yesterday. The Cardinals and their faithful celebrating their 11th World Series championship. And today, Rafael for a call, and the rest of the Redbirds receive their World Series rings from Bill DeWitt. And just as we were set to get started, the rain came, and the Cubbies are certainly hoping to dampen the spirits of their division rivals. Two hours we've been waiting, but it's time for baseball. And hi again, everybody, alongside Eric Karros. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Fox Saturday Baseball, and thanks for hanging around with us. Well, much was made about Albert Pools leaving this team. Could they replace his numbers offensively? Now, granted, we're only a week into the year, but so far they have to feel very good about the way they're swinging the bats. Well, they really are. And they've started off right where they left off last year. I mean, already, I know it's only been a week and a half, but they lead the National League in average and on base percentage in runs and home runs. I mean, offensively, they haven't missed a beat. We talk about David Freeze. We talk about Carlos Beltran, who's leading the team in home runs. Rafael Furcal at the top of the lineup. Lance Berkman's got off to a great start. What they do is they give you competent at-bats. They grind. They work counts. And they're pretty darn good hitters. And Mark McGuire said it to us best. He's the hitting coach. said, look, last year we were good. We could be even better this year. Yeah, that's bad news for everybody in the National League if that should continue. But earlier today, the story was the unveiling of the World Series rings. Boy, and they are spectacular. But it's the Cubs and the Cardinals on the field here in 2012. And the first pitch is right around the corner. You're watching baseball on Fox. Well, welcome back to St. Louis. You see the skies beginning to clear. And temperature just at 64 degrees. They're expecting it to climb as the humidity comes up a little bit. So hopefully we'll stay away from more of the wet stuff, although there are showers in the forecast. First year manager Dale Swain. Let's take a look at his Cubs starting lineup presented by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. David DeJesus in right field, Darwin Barney in second, and Starlin Castro bats in a third hole this season after batting in the leadoff spot most of last year. Alfonso Soriano in left field. Ian Stewart comes over from Colorado to play third. And they're giving the 29-year-old rookie Brian LaHare a chance over at first base. A ladder third of Giovanni Soto. Marlon Bird in center. And the former Marlon, Chris Bolstad, is on the mound. Opening pitch just moments away, and it's brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Uh, two hours after our scheduled start time, we're finally going to get started as soon as the Cardinals take the field. Of course, the Cardinals did not have their home opener until yesterday. Open against their biggest rivals, the neighbor state, Colorado, just across the Mississippi River. It's considered one of the great rivalries in all of baseball. You played it in Eric Karros, and it might be the most friendly rivalry in all of baseball. Yeah, not a lot of animosity in the stands at all. And, and I compare it to a Dodger Giant rivalry where, you know, you could look in the stands and you see fights breaking out here. It's a friendly thing, but I'll tell you what, a lot of fan support for both clubs. Sellout crowd on hand naturally at Bush Stadium, especially when the Cubs come rolling into town. Yesterday, some of the greats, Hall of Famers, Luke Brock, Stan Musial, the Wizard, 
Last year's postseason hero, David Fries, and the return of Tony Larusa, who after 16 years managing the Cardinals nine times took them to the playoffs. Came back for this weekend. And speaking of Tony Larusa, he's kind enough to stop by and join us in the booth today, Eric, in the fourth inning. Looking forward to that. Hey, I, I am as well. Looking forward to asking him a few questions and see how he's enjoying retirement. 24 year old Brownsburg Indiana native Lance Lynn gets the ball he's in the starting rotation replacing their injured ace Chris Carpenter but they very much like this young man's future in his first start this year a very good one against Milwaukee. Yeah most impressive just the one walk the eight strikeouts for him to be effective he needs to establish the off speed and that's the curveball even the slider and change which he doesn't throw often because he's a fastball power guy. He's new. The Cubs active roster only has four at bats against Lance Lynn. So for these guys as hitters Lance Lynn will have the advantage because they haven't seen him before. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defensively behind Lynn brought to you by Scott's Holiday Jay and Beltron in the outfield. No David Freeze today he injured a finger swinging the bat yesterday. No Lance Berkman still bothered by a strained calf. And their outstanding catcher Yadier Molina hanging the signs for Lance Lynn. Mike Matheny, the first year manager of the Cardinals, the youngest manager in Major League Baseball at 41 years old. Take a look at our four keys to the game. Well, for the Cubs, it's simple. Get them on and get them in. The first couple of games, they've been abysmal with runners in scoring position. The last two, they've been scoring at will. Lance Lynn for the Cardinals needs to throw like he did against the Milwaukee Brewers. Work ahead and don't give any free passes. David DeJesus came over during the offseason from Oakland after spending most of his career up in Kansas City. There was a strike and this one underway. DeJesus ate for his first 26 as a Cub and they put him right in that leadoff spot. He was a guy in Kansas City used to get on base a lot. And they did not get on base much at all last year. Oh, two. Well, you mentioned he didn't get on base that often last year. I think that's why the Cubs took him, put him at the top of the lineup, because they figure last year was an aberration. He can do better than what he did. Much like taking Ian Stewart and putting him at third base, there should be a high reward. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night for Mr. DeJesus. Lance Lynn not messing around, going off the plate an inch or two, but an excellent pitch. Fastball DeJesus just can't do anything. Well, they always talk about the importance of retiring the first batter in an inning. Well, Lynn has pitched. He started an inning now eight times, and all eight times he's retired the first batter. Darwin Barney got off to the amazing start. You may remember he was National League Rookie of the Month in April last year, was hitting over 300 at the All Star break, but then hit 238 over the final three months of the season. He just ran out of steam. Lost 15 pounds during the year. So with that in mind during the offseason he's added 20 pounds of muscle and hopes that his stamina will be better than a year ago. Well, Barney is a nice player. I don't think that he's the type of guy that is going to show just flashes of greatness where you go wow this guy's outstanding but day in and day out when you see him you really become enamored hard worker do the little things great compliment player a lot of people don't necessarily mention Oregon State University as a baseball power but don't forget when Barney was there they won back to back college world series another fine player on that team Jacoby Ellsbury. They had some talent. Lined hard in the center field, but John Jay is there. Two out. Take a look at our umpire.
umpires for this Saturday afternoon affair. Phil Cuzzy calls the balls and strikes. Dick Carapaz at first base. Jerry Davis, a crew chief, at second. And Greg Gibson works at third. Very talented Starlin Castro. In his first full major league season last year, led the National League, was fourth in the major leagues with 207 base hits. Quickly behind 0 and 2, and Lynn is just pounding that strike zone. When you look at those hits, Castro, 346 hits in the first two seasons. Dale Swain was marveling at his ability to get the barrel of the bat on the ball. You know, it's one thing just to make contact, it's another thing to hit the ball hard. A little bit low, one ball and two strikes. Now, we mentioned Lynn, grew up in Brownsburg, Indiana. That's just on the outer skirts of Indianapolis. Pitched at the same high school as Washington Nationals closer, Drew Storen. Little roller down to third. Should be a one, two, three inning, and it is. Twelve pitches, nine strikes. So the Cardinals, a hot hitting Cardinals, come to bat when we return. Mike Matheny starting lineup for the Cardinals brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. We told you no Lance Berkman, no David Freeze. So for Cole, Jay, and Holiday to start it, Beltron, Carpenter, Molina in the middle. Descalso in place of Freeze at third. Tyler Green over to second base. And Lance Lynn on the mound. Chris Volstad came over in the Carlos Zambrano trade from the Florida Marlins. And Volstad, if you look at what he did last game, you know, five innings, he had only two walks, but he was always working from behind. And when I talk about working from behind, that's what got him into trouble against the Brewers. Here he needs to throw strike one, strike two. His Cardinal lineup will wear him out and stay away from Matt Holliday. Matt Holliday hasn't started swinging the bat yet, but he does very well against Bolstad. Six for 11 lifetime. Here's Matty. In the air, short left field. Soriano is there, one out. Take a look at the Cubbies on defense presented by Scott. An aging outfield indeed of Soriano, Bird, and De Jesus. Stewart comes over from Colorado. Lahir getting his chance over at first base. And a battery of Olstead. And now in his fifth year as a Cub is Giovanni Soto. In his first year starting regularly is John Jay. He played in more games than any Cardinal a season ago. And after Colby Rasmus was traded, started getting regular playing time in center, and he's at that position from the get-go, and there's a broken bat roller. Lahero let it go. And a lot of Cub fans are cringing because that's the kind of play they saw in the National Series to begin the year. It may have cost him a game. Yeah, talking about that ball that the first baseman thought the second baseman was behind him, let it go through. Well, there was no second baseman. The ball goes into right field. It's a base hit. You see, here you go. For me as a first baseman, I'm making that play every day of the week. If I can get to it, especially like that, I'm going to grab it and make the play to first base, make it to the pitcher. Because one of these times I'm going to let it go, just like against the Nationals, my second baseman won't be there. Going all the way back to 2001, the number three spot in this Cardinal batting order was occupied, of course, by the great Albert Pujols. Well, now he hits third in the Anaheim lineup. And a man who used to hit third, in fact, took over hitting in a three-hole in Colorado from another great player, Todd Help, is Matt Holliday. See where that one got him. Right on the toe. Yeah, it looked like a foot. You can see where's that ankle protection, shin protection. That got all foot.
Bostead today aims for his first win since the 10th of July last year when he beat the Houston Astros while with the Marlins. He has gone winless in his last 12 starts. Five losses, seven no decisions. Despite the fact that his ERA is right at four, in fact, in September, his earned run average was under two, and he couldn't get a win with the Marlins. But now with a new team, and the Cubs very much like their starting rotation, and they pitched quite well to begin this season in their rotation. Well, again, this, this is the type of guy that the Cubs are counting on to reach their projected potential. Volstead has a ceiling that people think that he can get to, but he just hasn't arrived yet. Castro. Good throw, and that'll end the inning. Alfonso Soriano set to start things in the Cubs' second of a scoreless game. Today's game presented by Chevrolet is sponsored by New Just for Men Auto Stop is foolproof. Gray is over. Top of the second inning, each team retired in order in the first. Alfonso Soriato, Ian Stewart, Brian LaHare do up against Lance Lynn. Cubs open the year with seven games at Wrigley Field. One two of the seven and play their first road game and a big win over the Cardinals here yesterday afternoon the Cardinals home opener and boy they jumped on Adam Wainwright early and often got a three run home run by Ian Stewart in the first inning and a grand slam from LaHare in the third. In fact, it's two games in a row where the Cubs had jumped in front 8 0 after having a hard time hitting the ball through the first week. Of course, that has been one of the real big stories again in baseball the lack of offense off the end of the bat in a shallow right field, and it'll fall in front of Carlos Beltran. Ian Stewart did not hit a single major league home run 122 at bats last year. Well that changed yesterday in the first inning. Well like I said it, earlier this is a guy that Theo Epstein and the Cubs feel we might catch lightning in a bottle. A few years ago he was projected to be this power hitter. High pick out of Long Beach State. But just had a miserable year last year. Jim Tracy and the Rockies gave up on him, and Theo Epstein decided to give him a chance. Of course, they're trying to plug the hole of the departed Aramis Ramirez. He was their best offensive player a season ago. And really, from a consistency standpoint, over the last seven, eight years, Aramis Ramirez has been their best offensive player. So he's gone. Their best defensive player and biggest power hitter, Carlos Pena, is gone. Their best reliever, Sean Marshall, is gone. And of course, the always colorful Carlos Zambrano is now gone. There have been a lot of changes on this Cup team, and now the, the Theo Epstein regime, and probably a lot more still coming. Yeah, it, when we talked to Dale Swain before the game, and we talked about his expectations for the ball club, he said, I want to be able to compete. I want to say at the end of the year, we're better than where we were at the start of the year. Jay will back up at the track, tagging up Soriano. Here comes a throw to second base, and it's not in time. And that is the one area. In our conversation with Dale Swaim, and if you follow the Cubs during spring training, they were relentless. He was relentless and will be every day in getting this base running turned around and done the correct way. Well, and he talked about being more aggressive, running the bases. He felt that that was a part of the game that really has gotten lost universally, not just specifically with the Cubs. 
and he used a word that I had never heard when he talked about advancing or he said we need to capture the bag. We need to capture bases. You, know, you talked about how you don't have to be fast. You know, right there is a perfect example. I'm not sure that Alfonso Soriano a year ago would have tagged up and advanced first to second on a ball to center field. So here's LaHare, the 29 year old rookie who has spent the better part of eight and a half years in the minor leagues just waiting for that big chance. Hey, he's a guy that has, has proven himself in the minor leagues. We talk about, I'm sorry to go back, we talk about Soriano going mm -hmm. to second. I think that's a big reason right there. Dave McKay, one of the smartest men in all of baseball, responsible or a part of the success here in St. Louis for many years, right hand man to Tony La Russa. He's wearing the Chicago Cub uniform now. But I'll tell you, I, I think a lot of that, he does things where he'll put little notes in a, in a guy's locker. You get points for running the base as well, for doing things like that. And right there, Soriano, I guarantee you, he got some points. Two and one the count on Brian LaHare, runner at second base, no score in the game, and it's grounded foul. In fact, uh, we talked about LaHare and that grand slam, the first he's hit in his young career. Well, and he goes to left center, and this ball has carry on it. You know, and it's one thing for a guy to hit a fly ball, but it's another thing certain guys have the ability to put carry on the ball, where it just keeps going, going, going. You think you've got a beat on it. Before you know it, it's in the stands. Got a couple of home runs now, does LaHare. One he whacked out. On to Sheffield. Of course, that's down the right field line at Wrigley Field. And then that opposite field grand slam here yesterday. Well, again, LaHare's, I think I mentioned it a couple times. You got Ian Stewart. They hope he plays well. De Jesus, hope he regains his form from a few years ago. Bullstead, they want him to be what everybody expected. This guy right here, LaHare, they are all guys that you're kind of rolling the dice. There's not a lot of risk, but the reward can be great. And that's how I think this team this year, the Cubs, has been made up. LaHare originally a 39th round draft pick by the Seattle Mariners. And despite monster years as he takes ball four, I mean, he's had years of 113 runs batted in. 26 home runs, 25 home runs. I mean, year in and year out, and the Mariners just never gave him a chance. He led the Pacific Coast League last year in home runs and runs batted in, and the Cubs said, let's get him up here. Played well in a short amount of time. Carlos Pena left. He was their first baseman last year, and they're saying, we're going to give this guy a try. They brought in young Christopher Rizzo in a trade. They think of big things for Anthony Rizzo, I beg your pardon, down the road. But right now, the job belongs to LaHare. Breaking ball, ball one to Giovanni Soto. Well, and that's all you can ask when you're a, a minor leaguer. And, and that's an opportunity. And, and I remember a, a coach I used to have, Joey Malfatano, who spent time in Chicago. He used to say, a big leaguer is a minor leaguer with an opportunity. That's what Brian LaHare is getting right now. One and one on Giovanni Soto. Soto last year hit just 228. He did have 17 home runs and knocked in 54. Two on, one out. And a fastball is high. Soto's career has been a yo yo. In the even numbered years since he came up and had the big 2008, in 08, and 2010, really good. In 09 and 2011, not so good. Cubs are hoping that pattern, at least here in 2012, will continue. No 
Beltran drifting into right center field. He's got it. Soriano tags and advances on the third. There are two out. Well, Lance Lynn needs a new belt. Of course, I can go two ways. And all the middle-aged guys out there know what I'm talking about. They can be a good thing for some and a not-so-good thing for others when you need that new belt. That's a big man out there. He's only 24, yeah, so he can't use the excuse <laughs> like we can. Make sure to follow Twitter, Facebook for an interactive all access pass to Major League Baseball on Fox. You'll get behind the scenes as well as up to date news from around the league. That's Twitter at MLB on Fox and on Facebook. Runners on the corners, two are out, and here's a number eight hitter, Marlon Bird, off to a very slow start. Two hits in his first 24 at bats. Broken bat roller to the shortstop. And for a call, throws out Bird to retire the side. Two men left. Middle of the second. No score in St. Louis. Today's game presented by Chevrolet is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some Bud. Good duty keeping an eye on the Clydesdales. Of course, they were out in full force here yesterday for the Cardinals season opener. Now they got out a little later, though, than they had anticipated. Again, much like today, yesterday, a rain delay. Carlos Beltran bats in the four hole today. Ten hits in his first 29 at bats as a Cardinal. Three home runs, four runs batted in. They got the Cardinals first base hit of this season when they opened down in Miami and he'll be the answer to a trivia question for forever as long as Marlins Park is open he got the very first hit in that venue looking forward to getting down there. In fact, the Cubs are on their way down to Miami after this series is over. It will mark the return of Ozzie Guillen. After a five game suspension handed down by the Marlins. Two and two to Beltron. Did he go the appeal and yes he did. So Beltron out on strikes and right now let's check in with our main man Matt Baskersian for a direct TV game break. Well, Tom, you hope that you hope, Tom, when you DH your reigning Gold Glove Award winner, he comes through offensively as Adrian Beltre has singling in the go ahead run. Michael Young singled home another Rangers on top of the Twins 4 to 2 late in Minneapolis. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get direct TV. Call 1 800 direct TV. Back to Tom and Eric. All right, Matt Vasgersian will be checking in and he'll keep us up to date what's going on around baseball throughout the rest of the afternoon. We're just getting started here. A scheduled 12 o'clock local time game, a two hour rain delay. So we're only in the bottom of the second inning. Why not settle in for a while? We got baseball and then right after this tonight on Fox, NASCAR from down in Texas. Carpenter again in the starting lineup. It's been four or five days now where Lance Berkman has been bothered with a calf strain. So 
Well, he's out of the lineup again, and there's a two hopper at LaHare, two out. You know, Eric, you played the game a long time. And there are cynics, there are skeptics out there about every team. There is no perfect team. And one area where some point at this Cardinal team and wonder as you start getting into June, July, August. You know, some of the veterans, guys that have been around a long time and have had serious injuries in their career. You know, guys like for a call and of course Beltron coming back from a rebuilt knee Lance Berkman a lot closer to 40 than the guy who was tearing it up at 30 although coming off a great year how will those guys hold up well and I, I think that's the biggest question for this ball club is health a two out hit by Yadier Molina you just mentioned those names those guys are key guys in this lineup as well Right, and there's a guy, there's Lance Berkman right there. And you hope that's just a, a couple of games if you're a Cardinal fan. And we didn't even talk about David Freeze, who has had a history of injuries out today. It's an injury to the right finger, but as we talked about it prior to the game, he's never played more than 97 games in a big league season. Of course, Freeze, a uh... National League Championship Series most valuable player a local kid from just outside of St. Louis the World Series most valuable player. I think it's a surprise to a lot of baseball fans because you know he burst on the scene really last year after coming back from the broken hand in the big postseason. He's going to be 29 years old in a couple of weeks. Barney the short way a hit one left. And we're back to St. Louis in a scoreless game after a word from your local Fox station. Top of the third inning, no score. This Major League Baseball season, Fox Sports is so proud to support Boys and Girls Club of America, a place where youth can reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. To learn more, please visit greatfutures.org slash Fox Sports. Proud indeed. Pitcher against pitcher to begin the Chicago third inning and Bolstad looks at a fastball strike from Lance Lynn. Cubs 71 and 91 a season ago. Not a very patient team. Second to last in the league in drawing walks. Only five teams had a worse on base percentage. They were right in the middle of the pack in run scored. And they're hoping to improve in all of those areas this year under their first year skipper, Dale Swain. Well, they're going to have to play the game better because they're not going to out talent you. Second strikeout for Lynn. You know, when I talk about playing the game better, as we talked about earlier, Dale Swain talking about running the bases, capturing the bases, not giving away free outs, buckling down a bit more defensively, where, you know, defensively, that's something that you can come and work on. You know, already, he's seen some improvement with Alfonso Soriano in this early part of the season. Where Swain had a very short stint as the interim manager of the Brewers, 12 games were left in the 2008 season. And most of the time you hear 12 games left in a season, that team's not going anywhere. Well, the Brewers, you may remember, fired Ned Yost that year, and they were on their way to the playoffs with 12 games left in the year. And he went on to manage that club in the postseason. They lost in the division series to the Philadelphia Phillies. Swain's been around the game a long time. Good player. Former number one draft pick by the Brewers. In fact, the man who's his pitching coach, Chris Bazio, was the second round pick. The year Swain was the Brewers' first round pick. 
Well, you talk about his experience as a player, interim manager. I, I think also where he'll be able to go back and, and gather a lot of information. His experience as a coach with the Red Sox. Very similar situation here in Chicago. When you talk about the facilities, you talk about the many years of not winning a World Series. You know, he can draw on those sort of things from his time in Boston. High fly ball into right center field. John Jay makes a play. Of course, uh, you know, Theo Epstein was running the show in Boston when Dale was there as a coach under Terry Francona. He was 28 years old when he was named the youngest general manager in Major League history. Red Sox won a pair of World Series after that 86 year drought. The Cubs have not only gone since 1908 of winning a World Series, the Cubs have not played in a World Series since 1945. So Theo's goal is a foundation of sustained success. And we'll see if he can make it happen in Chicago the way he did in Boston. Darwin Barney line to center is only time up. Bolt foul. I mean, Eric, you played for the Cubs. You were there the, the night of the don't do game it. six. Don't do it to me, Tommy. Of the National League Championship Series. I was in the booth for that game that night with Steve Lyons and Al Leiter. You were at first base. And you know, we're not going to rehash all of that. Point I'm making is you have been down that road with the Cubs and worn their uniform. And you were really there for what I've always felt was almost a turning point in the history of the franchise. The fan base went from you know almost that lovable loser sort of category to now demanding the team start spending money and start winning games. Well I, after that year after that experience I think the expectations changed. It wasn't just to go out and enjoy a Cubs ball game. It was when are the Cubs going to win. Well, we're going to get back to this a little bit later on when we come back Jeff some margin is going to join us from the Cub dugout and still to come Tony La Russa, no score. Last of the third inning from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The Cardinals received their World Series rings before the game today. After having their home opener yesterday. A game where the Cubs jumped all over Adam Wainwright. Three runs in the first inning. Got a grand slam from Brian LaHare in the third in route to an, a big 8 nothing start and never looked back. And the beneficiary of that 8 nothing lead, the man on the mound who got the win, is second already this year. Jeff Samarja joins us from the bullpen. Jeffrey, congratulations. Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. And you're joining us from the uh, the dugout. The Jeff's dugout. not hanging out down in the bullpen. Catch that ball. And, and so we'll do so. Well, congratulations. Uh, I know, Jeff, you've been waiting for this opportunity. Uh, you were a starter most of your minor league career. You pitched so brilliantly out of the bullpen last year. And I would imagine you're very excited about being in the rotation this year. Yeah, really excited. You know, I put a lot of hard work in this offseason. Uh, they told me pretty early when Theo got hired that, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, that I was going to get an opportunity. So I, <laughs> so I didn't really want to waste it. You know, I, I didn't. <laughs> oh, geez. I didn't get the job in uh, 09 and 10, you know, as a starter, I ended up in the pen. So I, uh, you know, I just didn't want to, didn't want to waste this opportunity that they gave me, and uh, took full advantage of it for sure. <laughs> Showing great composure hey, right man. now. It's still raining. Listen, when you're surrounded by a bunch of idiots, you you work on that composure, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that was Matt Garza who came over having a little fun at the expense of his uh, fellow rotation mate. Of course, everybody's jealous of you right now, Jeff. When you, you had two starts and you got two wins under your belt already. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, and I really can't say too much about myself and all that. I, I thought the first game I threw some strikes and got some quick outs, but you know, uh, as a pitcher, when you come out, that they scored an early three for me against Washington, and then scored that early nine against me with for me yesterday. I mean, you know, what else can you ask for as a pitcher? Uh, just got to go out and pump the zone after that, and uh, hopefully they attack on a couple more. But you know, you add that to the defense that they've been playing behind me and. Uh, you know, it makes my job a whole lot easier. Base hit by the pitcher, Lance Lynn, his second hit in his first four at bats this year. 
Jeff, we spoke with Dale Swain before the game, and he talked about changing the culture with the Cubs. What have you noticed the difference from last year to this year? You know, I, I just think it seems like we have a direct plan with, with what we're what we're going for. You know, it's uh, from day one we came in and, and we were working on something that we were going to apply in the field. It wasn't just busy work. It wasn't just going out and, you know, doing whatever people have done in spring training the last 20 years or whatever. They had a plan with what they wanted to, you know, get changed. And it, I feel like we've all been on that same path since then. So it's just clear to the players and, and to the coaches on, you know, where we're heading and what we're looking for. And, and obviously that starts with how you play on the field and, and also with how you work off the field. But it's just a business attitude we have and we're still having a bunch of fun but you know Dale gets it man he's a uh, he's a he's a great skipper and uh, even though it's early in the season I'm, I'm excited uh, to see where this is going to go not only this year but down the road well what are your expectations for this year and, and I'm not you know I'm not looking for the cliche well we want to win a World yeah. Series title well yeah I mean, I mean, re realistically where, where are you at you know I think realistically we're just taking a great approach from you know series to series we know we're going to see a lot of these guys a bunch especially these Cardinals which we know is a great team uh, we just want to come out and play our style of ball. We know we're not going to bang it out of the park, uh, you know, four or five times a game. So we need to get on base, uh, steal some bags, you know, first to third. And as pitchers, we need to, you know, keep our walks down and, and uh, starters pitch deep into games and, and let our bullpen come and clean it up. So, you know, we just need to get get better all around as, as baseball players and, and playing together as a team. And, uh, you know, we've done that early. Obviously, a couple games didn't go our way early, but we were right there. And, you know, our record could obviously be flip-flopped, uh, you know pretty easily but you know we just we're just happy with how we're playing we're not gonna hit the panic button anytime soon and we're just gonna keep having some fun and, and keep working runner at first with one out two and one for a call and it drops in there a strike at the knees for a call fly to left his first time up Jeff you get asked this all the time uh, you were such a, a dynamic great wide receiver uh, at Notre Dame, you're welcome. I mean, you, you deserve it. Uh, you know, obviously, your your running mate back in those days with the Fighting Irish quarterback Brady Quinn. Uh, you guys had a good thing going. At the end of the day, uh, what was the, the deciding factor for you, if you will, because you could have played either baseball yeah. or football professionally? Um, you know, for me personally, I uh, I just want to make a decision that was based for me and just being happy. You know, I. Playing games, you know, once a week, I, was, I love doing playing football. You know, that's great. But the other six days a week, I'd rather be playing games instead of practicing. So naturally, baseball is the better fit there. But uh, I, after I went and played my, after my junior year in Boise and Low A, I really saw what baseball was about and professionally, and I just wanted to do that. I, I gave a lot of time in my life to football uh, growing up, seven on seven, and uh, every summer just doing as much football as I can. Mm -hmm. So I never gave that same time to baseball, and I really thought there was a high ceiling there. And I just wanted to, you know, go head first into it and see where we could go. And and I think we're taking the right steps and on our way there now. But uh, we still have a lot of work to do, and we still got a lot of improvement to do. Two away in the inning, and as a strike to John Jay. Do you miss football? Uh, I'll tell you what. At the end of the offseason, you know, when we're not competing, playing baseball, and you know, January is rolling around them dead days in the offseason where you're just kind of twiddling your thumbs. It gets a little tough. I'm a big Bears fan, so I'm watching the Bears play. And, you know, in the back of your mind, knowing you could be out there, it's stuff to deal with. But you get over it, especially when spring training starts, you forget all about it. Jeff, thanks so much for the time. We wish you the best of luck the rest of the year. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, Jeff Samarja joining us from the Cubs dugout. And he's off to a 2-0 start. It's a scoreless game at the end of three. Today's game presented by Chevrolet is sponsored by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. For Eric Kiros and our entire Fox Sports crew, we welcome you back to St. Louis. It rained and rained hard. And those two fellas were hanging out together, talking baseball probably for a long time. And you see a lot of that in the ballpark. Especially when guys are sitting with their wives or their girlfriends, whatever the case may be, and one of them's wearing a Cardinal shirt and the other one's rooting for the Cubbies. That's what I, we were talking about earlier. You know, it's a friendly rivalry. And I, I remember the days in Chicago that after a game, you'd see Cardinal fans and Cubs fans going out and having the adult beverage. You know, it's a kind of rivalry where you can be extremely comfortable bringing your kids to the ballpark. And it really doesn't get much better than that at the end of the day.
But Castro, he burst on the scene. Did he ever? His major league debut in Cincinnati back in May of 2010. His first major league at bat. He had a three-run home run. He wound up in that game, setting an all-time major league record in a big league debut, driving in six runs. Talked about last year, led the National League in hits, went on to the All-Star game. This should be, if it's playable, the first out in the inning, and it is. We'll take in a peek ahead to Fox Saturday Baseball next week. The Yankees and Red Sox will convene at Fenway Park. Some will see the White Sox and the Mariners. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 12.30 Pacific. Next Saturday, check the local listings for the game and start time in your area. Eric Karros, you'll be in Seattle. Yeah, looking forward to that game, the White Sox and the Mariners. Get to see Seattle and some of their youngsters. Robin Ventura over in Chicago. Taking over as skipper. Two to Soriano. Last ball just off the outside corner. Of course, you're talking about that rookie manager and Robin Ventura. And each of these teams, for all intents and purposes, with rookie managers. Yesterday, in fact, was the first time since 1977. Burn wrap for the Cardinals, Herman Frank to the Cubs. They were the managers. And yesterday, the first time where you've had new managers for each team meeting in a Cardinal home opener since then. Soriano going on strikes. Stick around Tony La Russa, future Hall of Fame manager will be joining us or is scheduled to join us in the bottom half of the fourth inning looking forward to seeing him. The Cardinals all time winningest manager and who could forget it. Eric you were playing and. You know I was announcing the games for the Cubs at the time when. When La Russa was named the Cardinal manager. And everybody wondered. Could he be the next Whitey Herzog, the beloved Whitey Herzog here in St. Louis? Well, I don't know if you ever replace a guy like Herzog, but I think LaRusse's record here in St. Louis more than speaks for itself. No, and as an opposing player, when you're playing against other teams, you know, you're playing against the players, but there are a few ball clubs, St. Louis, one of them, where you felt not only were you playing against the guys on the other team, but also that manager. There are a few teams where managers, I believe, some of the managers make a significant difference. Tony was one of those guys. Larusa, the third most wins all time in Major League Baseball among managers, over 2,700. In his 16 years, took the Cardinals to the playoffs nine times. The LCS seven times, the World Series three times, winning twice. Well, I, I think one of the things playing against teams managed by Tony, you were never going to outsmart him. You weren't going to outthink him. You weren't going to get him, you know, where they were, were caught with, you know, not paying attention. You had to be prepared. You know, and that was every single day, every single game, every single pitch, every single inning. Look at Dave McKay right there, part of Tony's staff for many years in Oakland and here in St. Louis. Gone swinging is Stewart. 
Third perfect inning of the afternoon for Lynn. Tony LaRusso scheduled to join us when we come back. They handed out their World Series rings just before the game today. And of course, the man who directed the ship, the manager, winning two World Series, of course, here with the St. Louis Cardinals, Tony LaRusso. Well, you look great. How you doing? Well, I feel great, although we haven't scored yet, so I'm <laughs> I'll feel better if we get a run while I'm at, here talking to you. Do you miss it? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I was, my time was enough. I'm excited about what's next, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. I'm very, you know, staying busy, but you know, I had enough dugout. Of course, you're working now uh, for the commissioner in Major League Baseball, and I mean, are you bouncing around a lot? What are you doing? Well, I had a real good spring. I stayed uh, some in Florida, and then I went to lot to Arizona because I hadn't seen it in so long. And you know, you stay current. And I'm fortunate the commissioners got me some doing some things to stay busy. But you know, you want to stay involved in baseball. And uh, Castro throws out safe. Oh, pulled him off the bag. High throw. And he brought up Castro, an enormously talented young player. The last year committed 29 errors and. And trying to get him to perhaps, you know, so young to, to focus each and every play, even the road team. Well, that's impressive hustle from Holiday too, the little ground ball, and he goes as hard as he does and ends up being safe. Tony, you talk about what you're doing now, working for the commissioner. Being out in L.A., there was some talk about possible ownership with the Dodgers or jumping on board with one of the groups. Is that eventually where you want to get? Off the end of the bat by Beltron, and this will be the first out. Tagging is Holiday, and he thinks better of it. Well, I think that uh, if I had my druthers, I've uh, all these years been involved with a competition of a team. You know, the winning and the losing. That's one thing. If you work for MLB, you don't have that, you know, for the good of the game. So uh, I have hopes, aspirations of maybe getting with a club and, and getting in the front office someplace. And I've always liked responsibility, so the more responsibility, the, the happier I am. You know, Eric and I were, were, were talking a little bit earlier today, and, and if you can go back to last year, mm -hmm. was there a time where you felt like retirement is maybe something, at least retirement from the dugout, is something you found yourself thinking about more than perhaps at another time in your career? I knew that the last uh, you know two or three years my time was coming to an end part of it was that I had had enough the other part when you're at one place 16 years I mean you need to refresh that that organization I think this is really good that this year they got a new manager and they got new coaches I mean a lot of good things happen from once in a while turning it over uh, but I had come close to thinking you know how much longer do you want to keep pushing and you know it, the more you do it the harder you have to push to get to that level 10. And uh, about midseason last year, I said, I'm convinced, and I waited till the last month to tell Bill and, and Mo in case I had to change my mind, and then waited till they fire me. But as it turned <laughs> out, you know, and then the way it ended up was just uh, ridiculous, like a fairy tale. Tony, if you could create a manager from scratch, what is the one characteristic that you would give that manager? Well, it's a. Uh, I really think in today's game which is a day now has been the 30 years I've been around there's so many distractions it's it plays with human nature because you're looking for guaranteed money and you may get it and all of a sudden your values are different you're not just surviving. I, I think the ability to lead to persuade convince win over your players your team with the proper frame of mind. I think that's probably the number one ingredient of, the, of leadership. Now the other things that you have to add is you have to have an idea about how the game is played. You know you delegate the coaches. I mean there's a lot that is added to it. But the number one thing you may be the smartest baseball man in the world. And if you have a person like this table where players don't follow you and, and, and want to believe in the way you want to compete or the way the staff and organization wants to compete. You got no chance. Back when you were managing Mike Matheny, 
And he's a very young man, only 41 years of age. I mean, I think a lot of people forget you had only managed, what, uh, two years in the minor leagues before the White Sox gave you that opportunity, if I remember correctly. Right. Uh, now, he has no years of managerial experience, minor league or anything else, but w w is he the kind of guy that you thought, even going back a decade or so ago, that might be managerial material? Well, he has more experience than I do. Did because number one, he played for a dozen years and played mm -hmm. very well. He played a key position. He was a true leader type. We had the privilege of watching that for five years uh, here in 2000 to 2000 through 2004. So, you know, he had big league experience. He played a demanding position and a leader on the team. Uh, we all knew, I'm talking about we as a coaching staff, that. When Mike could work with his family because they have five wonderful kids that are now growing up that he he had the bug to contribute stay in the game and he had a lot of outstanding characteristics that made him a natural. Three and two to count on Carpenter runner at first base is holiday reached on the air by Castro no score we're in the bottom of the fourth inning and we're thrilled to have Tony La Russa. This is where you get to second guess the manager, see if he's going to. What would you do? Would you run him here? Well, Carpenter, you know Carpenter is a hitter. You run him? I think he will. You don't know the signs, do you? No. All right. There he goes. In the air, well hit, racing back and over the head of the right fielder to Jesus. Holiday held at third on the double by Matt Carpenter. Tell us about Carpenter Tony. I mean your minor league player of the year two years ago. Well you know um, knew that he was a minor league player of the year and last spring he was uh, among the most impressive players in our camp rookie or veteran. Uh, he's a unique guy. I mean this guy gets to the play to the park when the coaches do and he goes right into the gym and gets a full workout. He's one of those guys that does everything to the max every practice. I mean he really gets your attention. And then he does it, the most important thing. He's not only a good practice player. He's a good game player. He really competes and I know this year after a year of triple A he's a better more rounded player plays several positions. That's why I mean I was sure Michael was going to send him because he puts the bat on the ball well. He really plays the game well. Well here's another guy that puts the bat on the ball of plenty and that's Yadier Molina. You know, Tony, all of us can talk about you not being there, Dave Duncan not being there. A lot of your coaching staff is no longer here. Albert Pools is not here. How do you think this team is going to fare with well, think, all of you not around? No, I think they're going to be outstanding because there's a you know you always concentrate on what's just like if a couple of guys get hurt. You know, you're playing what you have, not what's missing. And forget the guys that are missing. The club is very well set up, player-wise, coaching-wise. Uh, in fact, of the guys that are missing, the, the only guy that I think is irreplaceable is Dave Duncan. Uh, the only guy in uniform that we have felt for years that's irreplaceable is the guy that's batting right now. And we were just talking earlier today. It, it is a real pleasure for 162 games to watch Yadi Molina play the game. And there you go. Base hit left field. One run scores. They're going to wave around Carpenter, throw the plate, not in time. 2 nothing, St. Louis. I mean, he is he is a legitimately great player. And I'm not it was a defense and you know not a gold gloves. He won the platinum glove and all that stuff last year as the best defensive player, but he is a clutch winning player. Managers come in here and they'll tell you they fear him in an RBI situation as much as any of our RBI guys. Terrific teammate. Uh, uh, I mean, it's I pay to watch him play. He is that good. Tony, getting back to last year, was there any one game in that stretch, getting to the postseason, that you played that you said, you know what, this might be our time? Well, you know, <laughs> we made a <laughs> look <at> here, <laughs> and he takes off, and nobody was going to believe it. <laughs> now, now does he get the steel sign in that or is that strictly Yadier going no he's got the green light because he's such a smart player he is such a smart player that he gets the green light and you know end of the year he'll have he may get seven eight nine and be thrown out once or twice you know he's he's brilliant but uh, you know he made that whoops 
Driven into right center. This will go to the wall off the bat of Descalso. Molina scores. Daniel on his way to third. Throw from Castro. Not in time. Shoot, we were talking about the Cardinal offense before the game. We didn't mention having Tony in the booth as a real spark plug. <laughs> Well, the one thing I enjoyed tremendously last year, Dan Descalzo, John Jay, Alan Craig, David Freeze, these young guys came up through our system, and they won championships, and they are very comfortable. Uh, Russians say comfortable. We hate comfortable. Comfortable makes you sleepy. They're very confident in how they compete. I mean, these are really good winning players, and uh, they helped us get that championship. But, uh, you know, we had our ups and downs, and it wasn't just a continual uh, good, good, good all the way. So I think the Saturday game of against the Cubs, mm -hmm. when we had lost on uh, to the Mets, a heartbreaker on uh, Thursday, and we got beat Friday, and if we had lost that day, we'd be down three with four to play. And we came back in the ninth inning, Braves lost, and all of a sudden now, instead of three, we were one down with three to play. Um, just give me two down with, with uh, no one down one down yeah one down two game swing there with that win so uh, I think that that was the game in the in regular season and game two of the division series where we were already down a game there's another base hit four consecutive hits producing four cardinal runs. We were playing uh, against the Philadelphia Phillies, who really tough to play against, and we had lost game one. We were down 4 nothing to uh, Cliff Lee, <clears throat> and he was pitching very well. Somehow we just cranked out a bunch of really tough at-bats, got five runs. Our bullpen came in and gave them six shutout innings. Had we lost that game, we're, uh, there's no way we're going to beat them three times. I think those two games, more than anything, stands out. You know, when you look at your team, and Tony, you know, we had a chance to see you so much last year playing inside the National League Central. And as you're going through your year, and it's not to say you didn't have guys pitch well at this point in time or that point in time, whatever it was, but your bullpen. I mean, you have eight different guys that get saves for you. Uh, you know, from the very beginning of the year, Ryan Franklin's your closer. It didn't work out. Now you're having to change this guy, give that guy a chance, another guy a chance. You have some injuries down there. Lance Lynn gets hurt. He misses a month and a half. Could you even believe the way that group came together over the final five, six weeks? Well, it is a remarkable story because we started out with the bullpen struggling and we lost Wayne, right? And we had this really exceptional starting pitching guys like Loesch and McClellan and uh, 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 Garcia, Garcia right? all, all get off the big winning season. Then later on as they got a little fatigued our bullpen became a major strength and a lot of these young guys came along Dotel added some uh, veteran presence along with Arthur Rhodes. But here was bullpen struggle bullpen great. But the thing that to me I get asked all the time. You know we had this comeback and we won as the underdog. How did you do it. It may sound corny. Uh, but the number one thing we had outstanding character. Uh, and the will that we were not ever going to give in or give up. I mean, it's just a decision the team made that we were going to hang tough. And in the end, if we came up short, we would tip our caps to the teams that beat us. But it, they were, the club was rewarded in the end because we, you know, we, we just kept getting better and better at the end. Of course, it was a, just an amazing story. I mean, you go back to the final week of August. Well, the Cardinals were a whopping ten and a half games back. I think what a lot of people forget is that the Atlanta Braves, when all of this started, the third week of August, the Braves not only led the wild card, the Braves had the second best record in the National League. The team that was in front of them in the National League East, the Phillies had the best record. But the Braves weren't just some team that was duking it out for a wild card. I mean, they felt like they still could have won that National League East, that divisional championship. Of course, the Phillies were ravaged with some some injuries of their own and trying to get ugly back to 100 percent. And that ball is is fouled off. He said it hit it. Sounded like it hit it. But ten and a half games back and coming all the way back to get the wild card the last day of the season.
And of course, beating the Philadelphia Phillies in the division series, the Brewers in the LCS. An unbelievable game six. You're down to your final strike twice in that game. Tony, you walk away after 16 years with the Cardinals, 2,700 wins overall in your career. Albert leaves to go to Anaheim. Were you surprised Albert left? Uh, I mean, I think there's only one explanation, and it's not to blame Albert for taking the deal. It's not to blame the Cardinals for not giving them a bit more money. It's the system that exists. You know, the system, you become a free agent, and if somebody has that kind of value and, and the Angels are a smart organization a winning organization and, and they felt that that great value was there it, you know he has to go and, and the Cardinals you know still have plenty left but I don't blame Albert I don't blame the Cardinals mm -hmm. I just think that's the system and you deal with it was there ever a time in your years here in St. Louis where you thought maybe you'd go to another organization uh, well I mean if I was there 16 so in the first few years if, if, if if I got fired, I'd, I still had a lot of baseball left. But Here's, you were on the one-year deal. You'd say you talk right. about it every year. Was there ever a time when you said, you know what, I, grass might be greener somewhere else? In the last, uh, I'd say the last four or five years, I really felt that once it was done, what you'd need to do when you go to another organization, you make a commitment. As long as they'll keep you, you know, three to five years, because usually they, they bring you in if somebody's struggling. And I didn't think I had three to five years guaranteed of energy left. So uh, I, I really was thinking, you know, whenever this is it, this is it. If they don't want me, I'm done. If if I can leave on my own terms, and that's the way it'll be. You brought up Dave Duncan earlier. He left the club uh, to be with his wife, who physically has not been well. Uh, as their strike three, and we certainly want you to pass along. Uh, because we don't see him and haven't talked to him. Please pass along our thoughts and prayers to him as an entire family. Thank you. Did, did I see him here today come out before the game? Yeah, we were, uh, in fact, uh, he was here yesterday. He and I carried out the okay. the 11 trophy together, and we had dinner last night along with Dave McKay. And, uh, you know, he's, I've said it before, you know, it, it, it's not where I manage, it's where he coaches. And that's where I'd like to manage. <laughs> uh, Dave, remember yesterday we were watching the game together and I was, we were going through some of his reclamation projects because I wanted to be like specific. Okay, Dave, what did you do for, and I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, you know, Dave, one of his great attributes as a coach and something that all coaches should, should learn. And now we, we stress it with our team. It was never about Dave. I mean, the players were, the pitchers were so sure that Dave was there for them. He never wanted any credit. And uh, when you go through it, I mean, he would nonchalantly say, well, it was this guy, you know, with Tom, it was this, with Eric, it was that. And it covered the whole spectrum of what a pitching coach might bring. And that's the thing I think that separates Dave is you could not have an issue that he wasn't capable of, of handling. And I did ask Jeff Adelson, what was the, uh, who has the most wins and Dave Duncan has the most wins by about 500 of any pitching coach in the history of the game. Wow. And it certainly opens a conversation because one day uh, in five years from now unless you're doing something else that would limit you from being you know, qualified for being voted into the Hall of Fame as a manager you're going to be there but you know we've often said and many of us have said I know you feel the same way there are scouts out there there are coaches out there that should deserve the same honor. Well I think you know there's a, a, a misperception and that is that if you go in as other than a player that you're going in like a player you know whether you're a broadcaster you're a writer what you know that's a a different kind of of recognition and uh, I think that's what a lot of us would like to see for coaches and for scouts it doesn't in fact I think they're being very smart now they recognize them on Saturday where Sunday is only for the players who have had that kind of Hall of Fame career but uh, I hope at some point you know we, we are among our group we talk a lot about Dave Talk about Charlie Lau is, you know, that type of coach who's had a significant impact on the game. Joey Malpatano, guy you brought up earlier. Yeah, there are many guys that add to baseball behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom. I hear this too, Eric, that uh, some of the old timers say, well, the coaches don't do that very much. Well, in the old days, they didn't have to do as much because you, you spent five, six, seven, eight years in the minor leagues, but guys get to the big leagues so quickly now. That there's a lot of coaching and teaching that goes on at the big league level, and this has been true for you know 20, 25 years. 
Well, and I, I think also you talk about technology nowadays. So now coaches have to break down video. There's a thousand different reports. And really, the time demands now much greater than they were in the past. Well, that's an important point to make. Ooh. Knocked down by the pitcher Volstad. Hopefully he's all right. He appears to be, but we'll know later. Tony, we can't thank you enough for coming by. All right, Tom, thank you. All the best. Appreciate it. Outstanding, yeah, Tony. Thank you. Always. We'll look forward to seeing you sometime soon somewhere around baseball and back in at one of these days. Thank you. Cardinals get four runs in the bottom half of the fourth inning and lead for nothing as the Cubs bat against Lance Lynn here in the top half of the fifth. Lynn has been very, very good. He's only allowed one hit. That was a single off the end of the bat from Alfonso Soriano leading off the second inning and there's a second Chicago hit. This one from Brian LaHare. Well, we certainly hope that Bolstad is okay man listen to this. for call smoked that ball and didn't sound good off of Holstead. We can't thank Tony La Russa oh. enough for joining us. That was uh, that was great stuff. Yeah, it really was. I mean, that's about as good as it gets when you're talking about these in-game interviews. I mean, Tony, you know, very forthcoming and I thought he uh, you know just talking about his experience last year and you know the games that he felt were important being honest about wanting to get back in the game with some responsibility you know as I mentioned that I, I know he was associated with some groups that were entertaining buying the Dodgers I think he'd be great I really do well, you know baseball and there aren't many franchises that have gone down this road but there are some out there the Cubs in fact are one of them where you have named a president of baseball operations which is a separate job than the real grind of being a general manager and some say oh come on grind there's a liner and off the glove of green but they're going to get the out at second base so that'll be a fielder's choice. Well nothing you can do if you're the hair. I mean you see take a step and then boom you're diving to get back into first base so you don't get doubled up. So we watch that ball like the matrix just suspended there. Well that's the way it feels when you're the <laughs> infielder right. I mean it's just suspended out there in no man's land because you just whiffed on it. Well, he's just thanking goodness that LaHare was diving into first base, so you still get an out there. But, you know, it does. We, we had a last week a, a ball hit to Ricky Weeks, and he missed it. That one, that looks like he just took his eye off of it. He was ready to make that throw to first base before he even caught the ball. But it sounds crazy. Balls can take bad hops in the air. And they come off with top spin or a knuckleball. You know, to finish that thought about the Cubs they have of course Theo who now is the president of baseball operations and then that person is then in charge of hiring a general manager that Hoyer now of course uh, has that official title as GM of the Cubs leaving San Diego that went up and in spins bird out of the way and they said he went around falling down on the appeal to Carapaza over at first base. Yeah, I, I don't like that call at all because it's an attempt at the ball and that is not an attempt right there. That's getting out of the way. You know, and, and, as a hitter right there, especially with Marlon Byrd's history, you remember him getting hit in the face last year against mm -hmm. the Boston Red Sox. And he's not making an attempt at the ball right there and I'm not so sure that the ball or the, the bat even got out there at all. You forget making an attempt or not. That's a tough call. In the first base umpire. 
Well, Volstad appears to be all right after taking that liner that he may have knocked down with a glove, but he's still in the game. You, know, you told a story before the game, Eric, when I asked you about Marlon Bird and, you know, can a player get get scared of the ball? I mean, you know, there's some people out there who say, what are you talking about, a major league player? But you were a guy that got hit in the face with a 97-mile-an-hour fastball. Yeah, you know, and I'll tell you what, the, the thing, at least for me, is I never watched video of it. I, I was hit by Felix Rodriguez, a right-handed reliever for the Giants at the time. Uh, got stitched up, didn't... Uh, you know, didn't break anything, fortunately, and got out there the very next day. And the thing about it was I didn't watch video because I didn't want that image in my head. And you know what? I never faced Felix Rodriguez again. And I was on deck when I was with the Oakland A's. Ken Maka was the manager. We were playing the Giants. And I told Mock, I said, if I get up to that plate, you're going to have to yank me because I'm not getting in that box. So it happens. It, it, it happens. And I don't know if that's what Marlon Bird's been going through or not, but... Getting hit in the face is traumatic. And the fly ball will end the inning. Bird is rung up, just trying to get out of the way. Four nothing, Cardinals lead. Fox Saturday Baseball is sponsored by Chevrolet, proud to support youth baseball in cities and towns all across America. The MLB fan cave is back. Nine cave dwellers are competing to remain in the cave until the final pitch of the World Series. Check out all the latest cave happenings at MLBFanCave.com. Follow at MLBFanCave on Twitter and like on Facebook. Eric, hopefully you come rolling in and do that game with me in New York City this year. Well, I'm going to be out in New York in... Uh in a couple of weeks. Yeah, but you'll be coming the again. Diamondbacks in New York. I, I'll see if I can take care of all my business then. Politicking to, to have you come in and do a Mets game with me a couple of weeks after that. Just a short jaunt from Los <laughs> Angeles. John Jay, the batter. We're trying to get you to come to Boston with us, too. It'd be nice to have you. I mean, why would you drive 10 minutes down the road when you can fly to Boston? Hey, well, I'll tell you what. The Dodgers, the way they're playing. You know, that's a that's a ball club that got out of the gate real quick. Castro on the first base side of second. That's the second time he's done it. And we brought up earlier with Castro. There is a lot to like, and you'd have him on your team in a heartbeat. But there certainly are some areas that Dale Swain and the Cubs are trying to address. 29 errors a year ago, and it's two of them today. Yeah, and, and while that is a physical error, and, and so was the other earlier, they can be curtailed if mentally you're more into it. You're more focused. You're more disciplined when you're taking ground balls prior to games. And those are the things that are frustrating for Cubs fans, for Cubs management, because this guy physically has all the tools. The question is, and he is still very young, mentally, will he ever develop into being a superstar player? Of course, his air on the ground ball from Holiday opened up the four-run fourth inning. An hour, an air on the leadoff man the very next inning. One to Holiday, who's 0 for 2, is crowded to short, reached on the air by Castro, and has scored a run. Well, remember, the, the Cubs are, or excuse me, the Cardinals are doing this today. There's no Berkman in the lineup, no David Freeze. I mean, these are two guys that have started off extremely well for this ball club. Freeze 11 RBIs already. There's Lance Berkman. Berkman been getting on in a clip, I, I believe, over 500%. I'm over half the time. I mean, but the one thing we talked about at the beginning of the show, everybody gives you a good at bat. There aren't any easy outs. The approach is I'm going to make the pitcher work. And a lot of that credit has to go to the hitting coach. 
Mark McGuire. Tony LaRusa brought back into the fold. There's Mark. You know, I, I don't think that's any coincidence that Cardinals were so good offensively last year. This year they've got out of the gate. You know, you sit and you talk to Mark McGuire, you, you think of him as this power hitter, a guy that's just gonna swing for the fences. He's about as intelligent a guy when it comes to breaking down hitting as I've spoken to. Rian one to Holiday. In the air, left center field. Racing back is Marlon Bird. And just enough room. Out number one. That fourth inning, 28 pitches in the inning for Volstad. Had an error behind him to start it, got an out, but then surrendered four consecutive hits. Plating four Cardinal runs. One on, one out for Beltron, who has struck out and fly to center. Goes pitch taken throw by Soto is not in time. A little bit hot. And Jay able to slide underneath the tag of Castro, his first steal in two attempts. The Cardinals aren't a team that's going to do a lot of stealing bases, but they will be aggressive and pick their spots. So Yadi or Molina grab one earlier today. And the team leader coming into today's game, Rafael for call with two. On the inside corner of breaking ball, it's 0 2 to Beltron. Now you look inside the National League, you go all the way back to 1922. As Beltron and the home plate umpire Phil Cuzzy having a few words, is that was a final strike, strike three when he rung him up. I think Beltron wanted to double check about the count there himself. He didn't think that was strike three. Not only did he not like the call, he thought it was strike two in the attack. Well, these Cardinals are trying to do something that only one National League team since 1922 has done. That's when back-to-back -back World Series. You see, Carlos doesn't like that pitch in off the plate, up a little bit. You know, if the guy out there on the mound is hitting corners and pinpoint, then it usually happens where the home plate umpire will, will expand the zone a bit and if he's hitting his spot they'll give him the pitch but you know, Volstad hasn't been exactly pinpoint controlled it. So two away in the inning. Four strikeouts in the game now for Volstad and here's Carpenter who had that double sending Holiday to third leading to the four run fourth inning taken outside. Well, it's hard to believe it. That Cincinnati of course they're great teams a big red machine in 75 and 76 is the only National League club. Since the New York Giants in 21 and 22 to win back to back world championships of course it's been done multiple times by the Yankees more than anybody else over in the American League. Well, it just shows you that how difficult it is to do. Also, maybe how great those Cincinnati Reds ball club were. And you remember, you know, 75 and, and 76, but they were in the World Series earlier in the early 70s. Yeah, 1970, losing to Baltimore, losing in 72 to 
The Athletics have one swung on and fouled out of play. You know, if I'm not mistaken, the Mets beat them in the championship series, I believe, in 73. Yep. That's when Pete Rose and Bud Harrelson, Harrelson had yeah. that fight out at yeah. second base. Yeah. One and two on Matt Carpenter. High fly ball, right field. In the bright sunshine, De Jesus makes a catch and that'll end the inning. Top of the order coming up for the Cubs, trailing for nothing. Today's game presented by Chevrolet is sponsored by Olympic Maximum Stain and Sealant in one. Well, it was pouring down rain here in St. Louis early this morning. You wondered if we were going to get this one in. And after a two hour delay, we bring you our Jeep game summary. Nearly two hours of a rain delay. Cardinals get four runs in the fourth inning. And Lance Lynn has been very, very impressive for a second start. He is filling the spot in the Cardinal rotation of the injured Chris Carpenter. And quite frankly, they don't know when Carpenter will be back. Catch a bulging disc in his neck that's affecting the strength in his shoulder. He logged 273 innings last year. If you tack on the extended postseason after the regular season. Well, and remember, he came back on short rest and throw that game in the World Series. Of course, Carpenter won four times in the postseason last year. Some might be surprised to know Lance Lynn won two games in the postseason last year. Told you he missed nearly the final two months of the year with a, an injury to his oblique. But then he came back after not being on the roster in the division series. They put him on the roster, did Tony La Russa in the LCS in the World Series. He pitched in 10 games and won twice. Three and one on David De Jesus. And there's ball four. Second walk of the game issued by Lynn. Well, I mean, you're throwing a guy right in the fire when he doesn't pitch for you for the final two months of the regular year. And then you throw him in ten games. Well, and he just come out of the bullpen throwing gas. You know, that's one of the things that's a little bit different. Now as a starter, can't just go in and, and throw as hard as he wants. He's got to pace himself somewhat. Has to rely a bit more on the off speed. Basically a, a fastball curveball guy coming out of the bullpen. Now he incorporates a, a bit of a slider and occasional change. Of course, he got that win in the National League Championship Series in game two. That was a game Tony La Russa was talking about a little bit earlier. I mean, he threw one pitch and got Ricky Weeks to bounce into a double play to end the inning. That's a good day at the office. Pick up a win, one pitch. Left hander J.C. Romero begins to get loose. Lynn is first outing we told you against the Brewers went six and two thirds. Still under 80 on his pitch count of the game although knocking on that door. Double play ball here if they hurry. Nope. Bobble. And they still get the out somehow some way of Barney at first. Well for call although he bobbles it what he does do right especially for the kids at home picks it up with his bare hand doesn't try to grab it with his glove pick it up with a bare hand. Let's go. I got it. And now the nice pick. I don't know if we're going to see it but it was a nice pick over at first base by Carpenter went out stretched after it. Really safe for call. Maddie. You know we talk about him. 
being a good player, I, I had a chance to see him in the batting cage before the game out of TCU, but a high school teammate of James Loney. First baseman for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And see, let's watch for call again. Now see Carpenter gets extended out there, gets the glove out by where he anticipates the ball bouncing. Makes a nice pick. You see Barney, he's I got it, I got it. Oh, I ain't got it. You have to remember too for call one of the strongest arms at the shortstop position. One and one on Castro who's bounced to third and fouled out to the first baseman Carpenter. And now the one one. Breaking ball off the outside corner. Was Castro last year and there were reports about a, a run in with a manager Mike Quaddy uh, during the offseason as a 2 1 pitch is on the ground and into center field a base hit that'll bring in the first Cubs run of the game on a single by Starlin Castro. That's where it doesn't show up in the box score as an error. But really for all intents and purposes for a calls misplay on the ground ball which at the minimum would have been an out for the lead runner probably should have been a double play was hit so hard. Allowed the runner to advance first to second and he scores on a hit by Castro. Yeah, you know but if you're Lance Lynn you got to be kicking yourself the, the five pitch walk to De Jesus to start the inning. And you've got a four run lead. And as good a control as Lynn has, doesn't have to be so fine. So now Alfonso Soriano, he is single to right and struck out. Soriano this year at the Cubs convention, and for those of you that have had the chance to go, you know what that's all about. For those of you that have not, it is one of the most unbelievable events that any franchise has in any professional sport. Tens of thousands of people gather at a big hotel in downtown Chicago for what in essence is a three day pep rally. All the current players show up. A lot of former players show up. Eric you were a part of a, a Cubs convention. I was around for a half dozen of them. They're really amazing. They are, so, you, you know you, you can't really I don't mean to cut you off but you, you can't really do it justice by explaining it you have to experience yep. it. But Soriano was booed at the Cubs convention and that's unheard of. You know for a young man who, who signed that huge contract that eight year deal to come to the Cubs and you know there's some that felt like he's not you know, really lived up to his end of the bargain but he's never let it bother. Him. There's a little flare in the shallow center field and advancing first to third good base running by Castro. And the Cubs all of a sudden have a tying run coming to the plate. And Soriano just getting the bat on the ball. He's an 0 2 pitch. See Mike Matheny now. What's well, going to do it for Lynn? He's not going to wait around and let this guy. Let this thing get away from him. So six and two thirds his first start. Five and a third here today. He's given up just four base hits. He's walked two and fanned five. And they're going to give the ball to J.C. Romero out of the bullpen. See the numbers on Lance Lynn. Of course, he is responsible for the runners Castro and Soriano at third and first, respectively. And now with left handed batting Ian Stewart coming on. Mike Matheny will bring on the left hander been around a long time J.C. Romero from his bullpen.
Lamero got an inning of work here yesterday. Worked a perfect inning with a strikeout. Today, his 663rd appearance, and that's going back just to the start of this new millennium. 1 0 pitch is on the outside corner. 1 and 1 to Stewart. Romero began last year with Philadelphia. They let him go. He cleared waivers, signed by the Nationals and the Yankees, and then wound up finishing the year in Colorado. Pitched in 12 games for them. Two and one to Stewart. It was fly to deep center field and struck out. Well, Romero just looking for a ground ball right now. Wants to keep Stewart from driving in that run with a fly ball sacrifice fly. Tapper foul wide of first. Stewart, we talk about an injury riddled 2011 season. Started the year with Colorado as everyday third baseman. Had 122 at bats. They sent him down to the minor leagues. There's a guy that hit 43 home runs for the Rockies in 09 and 10 combined. And it's not like it was a Coors Field phenomenon. Well over half of his home runs have come on the road. And he looks at a fastball right down a pike strike three. Well, obviously, LaHare looking for something else, probably something off speed here. Fastball low and away. Hi, Harry. LaHare coming to the plate. I was just getting ahead of myself there, Tommy. <laughs> That's all right. Two left handed hitters, <laughs> big, strong guys. Well, I tell you what, when this guy lays in a one, you better find that tape measure. He can hit him a long way. First pitch breaking ball in there strike. Laher has walked and singled. All those years in the minor league system wondering would he ever get the chance. Well, the Seattle Mariners a 39th round draft pick. Last year his first year in the Cubs organization. For a full year at one place. Up till the rosters expanded they brought him up to the big league club. But he just dominated the Pacific Coast League. Some might say, well, you know, big deal to minor leagues. Well, when you're a guy that's still trying to, to live that dream, that's a big deal to go out and hit 38 home runs. Well, and you would think that it would at least get you an opportunity to test yourself at the big league level. You know, it doesn't necessarily translate into instant success at the big league level. I mean, just there are a lot of guys that a ton of success at the minor league. Level they get to the big leagues they, they call them 4 a players. They just can't do it at the big leagues now that's not to say that. Brian the can't do it because he's never been given an opportunity. Oh and two on the runners on the corners. Able to foul it away and we'll do it again. Romero early in his career it didn't matter if he faced right handers left handers he had the kind of stuff that could just overpower people. Now he's been around a long time. And he has become that guy that that primarily comes into a game to get left handed batters out. And in his career he's always done it. And right around 215 against him. Getting over. Romero does his job. Strikes out Stewart and Lahair. Yadier 
Molina already with a couple of hits and a couple knocked in. He'll start it for the Cardinals in the bottom of the sixth. Jackie Robinson broke baseball's color barrier when he took the field for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Of course, he'd go on to a Hall of Fame career. But certainly most remember his courage, his strength, his perseverance. On and off the field. Those are the things for which perhaps he is most remembered. Tomorrow, Jackie Robinson Day all over baseball. And of course, every team has retired his number 42. Rookie of the Year and the National League Rookie of the Year award is named in his honor. To hear the stories from so many who spent so much time around him. What an unbelievably courageous man. You forget you talk about what a great baseball player he was but even a better human being a better person to be able to persevere through the racism and discrimination to be able to keep his cool having played for the Dodger organization got to spend and, and still do often see Don Newcomb great pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers. MVP in I believe 1956 but he came up around the same time as Jackie did and endured a lot of the same things but always speaks very highly of Jackie and quite a man himself mm -hmm. two and two to Yadier Molina Don Nuka been working for the Dodgers for a long yes, time. He has. One of the best dressed men you'll ever see. He just looks great. Oh, I mean, he's got to be class. late 70s, right? Maybe class early 80s. 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 Looks like a million bucks. Three and two to Molina, and it's in the air. Foul territory, first base side. Lahair trying to find it. Mercy. Nobody there behind him. You know, I, I'm sure there was confusion over there and, and some communication issues. But what I will say about this, and it's just been the early part of the season, if I am playing first base and I'm Brian LaHare, I am, whether it's a ground ball, whether it's a pop-up, I'm getting everything. And so far, we haven't, we haven't seen that. We've seen a couple ground balls. This is a pop-up. I think he thinks somebody else is going to grab it, but... I don't know if this is becoming a pattern, but it's happened a few times already. So you do it the hard way. A line drive that almost got, knocks Barney into right field. Well, coming up tonight, NASCAR on Fox is in Texas. Under the lights in prime time. Great American Speedway to Chase the checkered flag, the defending champion, Matt Kenseth. It's presented by Farmers Insurance, live from the Texas Motor Speedway tonight, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, 4 Pacific. Two and zero oh on Daniel Descalso with one out here in the last of the sixth inning, and the Cardinals with a four to one lead. seen to scout so hit some other balls although he didn't miss it by much uh, it didn't sound right off the bat I, I agree with you but man he, he smoked that thing and 
to Jesus had to run back and made a pretty nice catch. You know, it's funny you say that because, I mean, you played the game forever. I mean, I, I've been fortunate enough to broadcast it now 25 years, and, you know, there's that sound. I don't know if it's the wood or the way they're making the bats, but it seems like there, there are more and more times where you hear balls like that, which don't sound like they're really just squared up and nailed. But then they carry all the way to the warning track like that. Yeah, you, you know, agree with me on that? No, that there's sometimes that, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the numbers say or if there's some study or anything like that. But it's, you know, sometimes like that ball sounded dead and the thing took off. And there's some balls that I swear guys will tell you they hit right on the barrel of the bat and the bat just exploded. And so you just, you know, I, I don't think it's any conspiracy or anything like that. It just is what it is. Sometimes you see these things happen. I mean, you be the judge, you know. Sounded better there, but, but, yeah. but it's still not that that sound. I think that was HD sound. Thank you, Tommy. It was. It is. It is. I like that. I might borrow that sometime. <laughs> I think that's how my kids hear me in HD sound sometime. <laughs> You know that feeling. Uh, well, my hear my kids, uh, they're deaf. <laughs> they're deaf when I'm talking. That was pitch number 100 of the game, and Bolstad thought that was good enough for strike three. You know, my impression of Bolstad, he, he's going to be a guy that is going to keep you in the game, not going to shut you out, not going to toil that two to one win. But he's not a guy that is going to miss a ton of bats. He's going to keep your defense involved. Straight away center field. Bird backs up shy of the track. And Bolstead gets him through six. He gives up four runs, three earned, and trails by three. We're in St. Louis, Missouri, sold out Bush Stadium. Major League Baseball on Fox presented by Chevrolet. Cardinals had their home opener here yesterday. Cubs getting the win. And then earlier today, this morning, on the field, the World Series rings from their title a year ago, the 11th in franchise history, were handed out as Mitchell Boggs now takes over on the mound. Cardinals in front four to one here in the top of the seventh inning. Boggs has done virtually everything for this organization up and down from the minor league starter long man setup man sometimes closer. Cardinals in a stretch after they played that very first game in Miami to open Marlins Park of 27 consecutive games inside their division. After the Cubs leave tomorrow. Really the three teams picked by most prognosticators out there to be the heavyweight contenders if you will in the central division this year are the Cardinals. The defending divisional champion Brewers. And the champions in the Central two years ago, Cincinnati. The Reds will come here to take on the Cardinals beginning Tuesday night. There's a drive into right center field, and Jay will get it one out. And if the Cubs and the Cardinals have the, the longest storied rivalry inside the division, there is very little doubt among the Cardinal faithful of who the most bitter rival inside the division would be and that would be the Reds. Yeah, and you talk about all three of those ball clubs the, the Cardinals the, the Reds and the Brewers and each of those teams have areas of weakness. You know I, I think you talk about the Cardinals. I, I think the health issue can be a, 
a big concern. You talk about the Brewers. Do they replace Prince Fielder offensively? How are they going to be? The Reds, I, I, I think the jury's still out on the on that starting staff. You know, what are you going to do on the back end of that bullpen? That's why I'm not so sure anybody runs away with anything here. And I'm also, I'm not convinced that the wild card, now there's two wild cards, maybe it, maybe one comes here. Of course, last year it was inside the National League Central where the two teams that wound up in a league championship series came from, the Brewers and the Cardinals. Well, again, I, I think the Cardinals, when you talk about the ball club last year, they were easily the best team the last two months of the season. Now, I don't know if you could make an argument that they were the best team in baseball no. last year. I don't think any, you know, any any year any team wins a championship. You know, very rarely in any sport are they the best team in that sport that year. Fly ball in the center field, and there are two outs in the end. Yeah, look. But they are playing the best at the end of the year. Well, for you Cardinal fans, you can tune in tomorrow on Fox Sports Midwest for the final game of this series. Coverage starts at 12:30 Central Time. Dan McLaughlin and the Mad Hungarian Al Rabowski will be on the call tomorrow. I remember him watching him as a kid yep. get behind that mound and pounding his glove and getting all fired up. Well, he was here with his grandson uh, at the game today, enjoying a day off. He looks great. Yeah. So Blake DeWitt, no relation to the Cardinal owner Bill DeWitt, comes to the plate. That's in the air, left field, and a one-two-three inning for Mitchell Boggs. They stand and stretch in St. Louis. Cardinals four, Cubs one. Today's game is brought to you by the 2012 Ford F-150 built for tough. And by the snap spreader system from Scott's feed your lawn. Feed it. Chris Volstead goes the front six innings. And taking over out of the bullpen right hander Sean Camp. We get the loss Monday and Milwaukee allowed three runs in a couple of innings of work. Signed as a minor league free agent. Started the spring in the Mariners organization. Last year pitched in 67 games with Toronto. And during his career he's pitched for not only the Blue Jays over four years but. Also originally came up in the big leagues with Kansas City. And pitched two years for the Devil Rays, as they were known then in Tampa Bay. First pitch swinging is Eric Kamatsu, the pinch hitter. One pitch, one out. Again, let's check in with our direct TV game break. Here's Matt Vaskersian. Tommy, the uh, first place Washington Nationals off to their best start since they were the Expos trying to win their fifth in a row. Bottom of the third, Adam LaRoche, two run double. Nats have an early lead over the Cincinnati Reds. If you call yourself a sportsman, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Back to Tom and Eric. Thank you very much. You know, there aren't many people around that when they tell you something that are in the game of baseball, that either one or two things happen. Either one, which is the overwhelming majority of people, you kind of roll your eyes and think, okay, I'm getting just a lot of the hometown company line here. There are others that speak, and they are few and far between, where when they tell you something, you're all of a sudden like, wow, that's a pretty powerful statement. Well, one of the latter guys happens to be Davy Johnson. And we Davy Johnson comes out and says, we're going to be the best pitching team in the National League this year. That is saying something. Because I'm not sure there are many managers in the history of baseball that know more about pitching than Davey Johnson. Well, and that's losing the, their closer, Drew Storen, out mm -hmm. for the year, surgery. They've got a young staff. You know, what I think is going to be interesting is what do you do with Strasburg when 
you're competing for something in August and he's had his in innings limit. Mm -hmm. Breaking ball strike three. You know, it's a great question Eric. Uh, you know Cincinnati probably is going to face the same thing with a role as Chapman. When the time comes where he goes in the rotation and for, for some of you wondering well, what do they mean by that. Strasburg missed all of last year after Tommy John surgery. The Cardinals had to do it three years ago with Jaime Garcia. He missed virtually an entire year. So when he came back the next season, you know, they were going to really watch his innings number. And they got him around 140 and then they shut him down. Next year went up to 190. Shut him down. This year is the first year where the handcuffs are off Garcia, so to speak. But they're very much on Strasburg. Yeah, and, and I think he's a talent that they'll be more careful with it. You know the short term rewards. They're not going to risk that with the long term benefits. But I, I, I still, I, I've got to see it to believe it. You know, come August, if if Washington is still around, if Strasburg is having a top notch season, do you start skipping starts? Do you put him in the bullpen. Do you shut him down? Easy to say now in April. Mm -hmm. You know that's a that's a competitive National League East though it really is. I mean, you could make a case for four teams I think. Down the right field line and plenty enough to sail into the seats off the mat of John Jay. in front here in the last of the seventh. It's just a hanging breaking ball. Jay stays with it and he knows it's gone the minute he hit it. Right center shading his eyes from the sun is Bird and that's that. But not before the long ball from John Jay, his second in this young year, and the lead back to four for the home team. Gateway to the West, we welcome you back to St. Louis. Major League Baseball on Fox is presented by Chevrolet. Comes bat against a new Cardinal pitcher. The fourth they've used today at 24 saves for him a year ago. Fernando Salas. When you look at that game is five. This is number six on the appearance chart. I mean it's nice to get some work and you don't want to get lost in that bullpen down there but. At this rate, six appearances, and we're not even two weeks in yet. Oftentimes, when you're a manager, and certainly Tony LaRusso will be the first guy to tell you this, especially when he had both Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright healthy. You're talking about for that two year, three year time frame, you're talking about two of the top four or five pitchers in the league. And guys that every time they took the ball, they were giving you seven, eight, nine innings virtually every single time they got it. That's two days out of every five days you're playing. But right now, with Carpenter out, Wainwright just back. They don't have that luxury right now. That one down the left field line. Nice play by Holiday, holding De Jesus to a single. Now it's time for the Just for Men Auto Stop Foolproof Stack. Just as the Cardinals counted on Lance Lynn for a good outing, you can count on Just for Men Auto Stop for foolproof results. 
Well, you, you know, you're talking about the starters, and, and Lynn, while he did throw well today, it was five and a third. And, you know, we talked about it in between innings where, you know, Wainwright short outing yesterday. Today, five and a third. You, you start using that bullpen. And while the bullpen may be suited to come out, get outs, keep games in check, you're doing that in April and May and June, and then you wonder why in August these guys can't do it. You say, oh, geez, the bullpen, these guys can't do it. Well, just don't want to overdo it in April and May because it'll come back and get you. This thing is, a, you know, it's cliche, but it's a marathon. It is not a sprint. One and one on Darwin Barney 0 for 3 is line to center bounced to third grounded to short. It's one and two. One and two the count on Barney. Runner at first nobody out. And now there's an out. Well, Mike Matheny. Better stronger smarter presented by Mazda that moved to, to come get Lynn. With already a run home and two on. Brought in J.C. Romero to face left-handed batter Stewart and LaHare and got a couple of strikeouts. Mark Zepchinski, the left-hander who came over from Toronto last year, is getting loose in the bullpen. Matheny, 41 years old, youngest manager in Major League Baseball this year. Grew up just outside of Columbus, Ohio, and Reynoldsburg, Ohio. And we were talking to him about the, the story about when he was a, a youngster. There's a fly ball in a short right. And by a diving Beltron, who did not get a good jump on it at all. And on the third base goes De Jesus. He had to wait to see if Beltron was going to catch it. And in the second goes Castro. Yeah, if Beltron could do that over again. He probably plays it. Well, not probably. He should play it a little safer just because of the situation. Our, our coach Joey Amalfitano, who we talked about earlier, always used to say the scoreboard will dictate how you play the game. When you've got a 5 1 lead, you're just trying to keep double plays in order. You're not trying to let the other team back in the game. And right now, a base hit makes it a two run ball game, which is, as they like to say, a bloop and a blast. Mm -hmm. And you know, we saw Starlin Castro not running hard, but again, that's just not that big of a deal. He wasn't going anywhere. You got a runner in front of you. Going to end up at second, anyhow. Soriano chases a first pitch breaking ball from Salas. Comes up empty. Strike one. Well, these Cubs had a chance to see Salas for the first time last year. And most of the time, that was in a closing role. Told you, he led the team one of eight different Cardinals to earn saves out of their bullpen last year. Well, you brought up earlier one of our four keys to the game. You know, you get them on, you got to get them in. First six games, Cubs didn't do it. And all of a sudden, the last two they did, and they won a vote. Yeah, the, the hitting with runners in scoring position, abysmal their first six games. Scored that total of 19 runs over their first six. And remember, three of those were against that pitching team we were discussing a little while ago, the Nationals. 
Well, and, and on Thursday, they were 7 for 12 with runners in scoring position. Yesterday, 5 for 11. 2-2 two, two pitch. Got him swinging on a breaking ball. Soriano, no, 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 it's to be overruled. First base umpire stepped right in there. Vic Carapaz and said that ball hit the ground before it landed in Molina's mitt. So the at bat is still alive for Soriano. And you see the dirt pop up. A nice call by the first base umpire. Bill Cousin blocked out there by Molina. Two two pitch. Just missed. Well, this more than likely will be the final batter that Salas faces. Again, you've got the left handers back to back in Stewart and LaHare. Let's pitch a little bit down. One of those balls, you're not going to hit it anyhow if you're a hitter, and you foul it off. Take your chances. Eight pitches so far in this at bat. Salas against Soriano. And Soriano hoping to do some damage on pitch number nine. There will be a tenth. Soriano looking for his first extra base hit of the year. Soriano hit 26 home runs last year, but had the worst on base percentage of his major league career. With a batting average down in the 240s. This time he's out swinging. It's just a fastball right down the middle. A little on the low end, but not anything that Soriano shouldn't be able to handle. Well, that's going to do it for Salas, as we suspected, with the left-handers coming up. Now, the question is this time, does Dale Swain take down Stewart? We'll know the answer to that when we come back. Left-hander Mark Zepchinski came over in that seven-player deal from Toronto last year. Pitching in his fourth game this season and generally he has been mighty tough on left handed batters. Now he really hit has it, you know left handers about a 206 clip career wise off Lipchinski. Surprised that Dale Swain isn't going to Jeff Baker. He's got the right handed hitter on the bench. We saw Stewart. Strike out against Romero. The left handed pitcher and Baker. Career wise, 300 hitter against left handed pitching. Stewart behind 0 and 2 here in the eighth inning. Cardinals five runs, seven hits. Chicago one run, six hits, and two errors. Roller foul. Well, you have another left handed batter next in LaHare. And should we get any further than that, more than likely we'll see the Cardinal closer who's up and throwing in a pen, Jason Mott.
Look at that last name. R is silent at the start of it. His nickname is Scrabble. Whole pile of consonants in that name. Former second baseman that played with the Cubs and these Cardinals, Grezel on it. Mm -hmm. He had a, a name that in letters would rival this pitcher Zepchinski. Mm -hmm. One and two the count. And a fly ball. Deep left center. Jay will run it down. From St. Louis is brought to you by Lexus and the pursuit of perfection. Take a look at our in game box score brought to you by Lexus for the Cardinals leading five to one. They've gotten home run from John Jay, had four runs in that fourth inning. Molina, two run single, Descalso, a run scoring triple, and an RBI single by Tyler Green. Well, that, that's the thing. You, you look at the top four in this lineup today. Jay hits the home run, but they're a combined one for 15. That ball really carrying out towards that part of the ballpark, and what a play made by Marlon Bird. Went a long way to get it. And a step in front of the wall in backhanded fashion. A bird covering a lot of ground knows where he is on the field and just gets that glove out there. Really a nice running catch. So now Carpenter he had the double which helped propel the Cardinals to the four runs in the fourth against Volstad. Isn't fooling too many guys right now. Throwing a lot of pitches over the plate. He's thrown 15 pitches, 13 of them strikes. Would you believe a ball right there? Ball one indeed to Molina. Tapper down to third, charging is Stewart. Well in time, good play. So the Cubs come to bat. LaHare, Soto, and Bird to begin the ninth. Cardinals lead five to one. Major League Baseball on Fox is presented by Chevrolet. It's the top of the ninth inning, not a save situation with a four-run spread. But he's a closer of the Cardinals, right hander Jason Mott. See two out of two and save chances early on this year. They'll be facing a left handed batting LaHare. And then right handed batters Soto and Bird. LaHare has been on a couple of times today, has been on base, in fact, every one of his starts to begin this year. Today, a walk, a single. But struck out stranding two ending the sixth inning. J 
Jam shot roller down to the first base bag. One out. Here's today's Burger King smooth play of the day. Radier Molina getting the Cardinals on the board with a two run single and that four run fourth. Shoot, I, I was hoping they'd run that clip a little longer. We'd see the stolen base. You know, I, I thought it was interesting. We had Tony LaRusa up here in the booth and he talked about Yadier Molina and that. He basically is a superstar player. Everybody talks about what he does defensively, but his at bats, his awareness of the game. And I think Tony seeing him day in and day out and having him on his ball club, you know, really came to appreciate him. Popped up to the first baseman, Carpenter. And the Cubs are down to their final out. All right, so you got a week of rest, and I'll catch you in uh, Cleveland for the Indians Angels in two weeks, right? That's right, and then we uh, go to Chicago. Yeah, we're going to Chicago. Not too long after that. A couple of weeks down the trail yep. in mid May, we'll be together again for the Cubs and the White Sox from Wrigley Field, and then you'll be joining me in Boston and New York and points <laughs> all over the place. There's a check swing and a foul ball out of play. See, I'm just trying to get you out to see the world a little bit here. Oh, I'm going to see. I'm going to see New York. Yeah, uh, out there the first week of May. I've got the Diamondbacks and the New York Mets. Diamondbacks off to a great start. So they started the season with a bang, sweeping the Giants three in a row. Marlon Birdo for three. Cubs down to their final out, and the Cubs are down perhaps to their final strike. And this ought to do it for a call backhand, and that's it. So the series is even at one game apiece. Lynn the winner, Volstad the loser. In a 5-1 Cardinal decision. We certainly would like to thank both Jeff Samarja and Tony LaRusso for joining us as part of our telecast here today. Tonight on Fox, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series returns from Texas. Coverage begins 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Fox Saturday baseball returns next Saturday. Some will see the Yankees and the Red Sox. Others the White Sox and the Mariners. Coverage at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Check local listings for the game and start time in your area. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. For more information on today's game and the latest in Major League Baseball, log on to FoxSports.com on MSN, the world's favorite sports site. Our producer today, Carol Langley. Our director, Jonathan Evans. Our associate director, Brian Biederman. And our broadcast associate, Gilbert Zapata. The executive producers of the pregame show, Don Bowie and Mike Santini. For Eric Harris, Tom Brenneman. So long, everybody. Have a great weekend.